Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Get Jashed. Today I have with me Taylor Bonga. Taylor is a spiritual empowerment coach who is certified in NLP, EFT, hypnosis and time techniques. And Taylor is also a mom of two little babes and is this badass businesswoman who works for herself and shows up every day. So um, it's amazing for me to witness that, but it's also such a pleasure to have you on and joining me here today. So thank you so much for joining me, Taylor. Thank you for having me. I'm so Bye. thrilled. And <laughs> that was such a nice intro. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, I wanted, I, I'm really excited for this conversation today because I witnessed you, as I said, like I watch you as you show up. Um, like on your socials, in your business, for your clients and just sharing and um, some of the things you share show that you've gone through a lot of growth, especially around like what motherhood means to you and how you show up and how you've processed like that whole journey of like, like we all have been like being a child <laughs> and then yeah. entering that phase of now you have children as well. So yes. um I feel like that's a really important topic for us all to at some stage dive into a little bit and acknowledge for ourselves a little bit of what that means for us. So I guess to start us off with, um, could you share a little bit a little bit about what what motherhood means to you in the context of how you show up? Yes. So I love that and how you said in the experience of us all being a child at one point, because whether we realize it or not, that completely shapes and shows up as we are as adults, right? Um, and motherhood is just so much. <laughs> you can't really put words to it so well. Um, but in the context of like showing up and it's been, you know, a, a big balancing act to have a business and be like a conscious mom, right? I am, one of my biggest goals was even when I started as an entrepreneur, I was like, even if I only change myself within this process, then I've completely changed the generations in front of me. And my therapist always jokes with me like, well, oh, that idea is like so big. Let's like reel it in a little bit. Cause I yeah. used to be like, feel so guilty or shameful when I wouldn't act in alignment with that. Right. Because mm -hmm. we're human and we all can react poorly at times, even though we have the best of intentions. And as a mom, there's a lot of stuff that's outside of your control. So there's like this whole level of healing that has to be done. And that gets really like served up to you on a silver platter. Like, Hey, here's the shit you need to handle. <laughs> um, that you always kind of just ignored or put on the back burner because nobody was pressing you to deal with it. Right. And that's what children do for us. Like I always say our kids are our greatest spiritual teachers because they show us so much about ourselves and really what we're frustrated with in the moments of motherhood that are frustrating we're frustrated with the like reflection of ourselves really. So we're seeing things that like our inner child is like screaming out about, even though, you know, it's, you're being frustrated by it. It's really like a piece of you <laughs> that's yeah. figuring that, right? Um, so there's just so much, but that's exactly like what I wanted to come on here and talk about today is just how much that journey in motherhood has created the desire for healing within myself and like where it stemmed from and all of that. Mm, yeah. Thank you. I'm so grateful like already for just how, how candidly you show up as well, because I think that sharing our stories or sharing those little learnings that we have are so, so powerful for other people around us. Um, so or the other people who witness it, yeah, who can go, oh, and there's like this little seed planted of, oh, where can I look at? But I love, I just want to acknowledge, like, I love how you're like, yeah, I'm just going to like do all this generational trauma, all of this work. <laughs> like, it's just one thing, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just like no big deal. But um, <laughs> really, it's everyday, it's everyday stuff, right? Mm, that starts yeah. with ourselves and us taking that 
luck, like you said, um, mm -hmm. what's happening and deciding like where to go from there instead of like brushing it under a rug, right? Yeah, yeah. And I especially, I love the, um, the perspective of like, because I'm not a mum yet, but like, I love the perspective of, you know, the children, like children are our mirrors in a way. And there's an inner child that like, when we get triggered or when something is mm. sparked in some way, it is our inner child that's like, hey, this is, this is a thing, excuse me, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> yes. this is a thing, can I just, <laughs> and um, I imagine that like, even when like my inner child shit gets like triggered, without kids like it's yes. tough enough so like I can imagine that with kids involved it would just be confusing as to like where it's coming from or how to how to deal with it as well so how to navigate it right yeah like what do I what do I do now but like <laughs> this, this thing hurts but what do I do with it um right. what's what's something that's really stood out for you as far as um your own inner child needs and everything since since becoming a mum? Um, that has taken like some time to unfold. I had another mentor earlier this year. My son was five months old at the time. And I messaged her like, I'm just struggling. Like I'm not sleeping. I just want him to sleep. But like, I want so badly to show up in my business and like move the needle and all of that, right? And she wrote me back like the most amazing message that was just so powerful, but it was basically like her helping me see that like energetically, I wasn't taking care of something within like myself and my inner child that was like stressing my kid out. Like, and I know that sounds crazy, but energy is so powerful and we don't even realize like how many layers of it there are and she was like so right like there was a piece of my inner child that was like coming out of my son like needing more attention from me where if I could have just and I did like go inward more um then things started to get a lot easier actually it was really fascinating so I would say that that was a major revelation for me to realize that um and some ways that people can you know connect with their inner child to maybe see um what it is that their inner child's needing is there's a few things that we can do and one of those like I even have a picture right now of myself as a little baby <laughs> so I have pictures just around my office of me as a kiddo um up until like age seven because that's our imprinting stage basically as um mm, humans yeah we are so easily programmed within that time frame. So um, many of us have operating systems that are that were established when we were like seven years old or younger. Um, and so having pictures around from that time frame can really like help you connect with that inner child. Just having the pictures, whether you want to like meditate on them or just have them around. There's also some journaling you can do by just saying like, hey, little Taylor or hey, little Jess, I'm here. What do you need? And then basically whatever you're getting a response with, you you write that with your non-dominant hand. So if you're like right-handed, you would write it with your left hand and just kind of see what comes through. And then if you want to respond, you would write it with your dominant hand. Um, so those are quick, like simple ways that people can kind of see what's going on and see how they can like help that inner child feel more heard and safe and loved because that's really all our inner children want is yeah is the feelings right of security yeah definitely and it's interesting because I was listening to a podcast yesterday and in it they said that like when we're children up until we're about seven is we're inherently narcissistic but not in the clinical sense just in the sense of how like our thought structures make everything that happens about us like oh mom and dad broke up that's about yes. me that's my, oh my fault gosh, it's or, so fascinating I've never heard that before yeah and it's like oh yeah that actually makes a lot of sense because it is that imprinting age like you know or block of age and um and then it, that's how it shows up like because that's the story that we tell ourselves until we're older and then maybe we we 
stop telling ourselves because we bring that awareness to it as well. So I think, right. yeah, those or we stay stuck in it. <laughs> yeah, or like yeah, or we stay stuck in it. Like depends on on the willingness, I think, to yeah to take a look because it can be mm-hmm. uh, uncomfortable yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Very much. Very much. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I love that practice. Break down our walls, right? Yeah, we have to be willing to, like the practices that you suggested, like to me, I'm like, yeah, that's great. But I also know that I need to create space around them as well because you're going to shift some things. Even if you don't cry or whatever, you know, you're still going to, there's still going to be something going on. The energy is still going to be moving. Yeah, there's still going to be something. So it's, it's also, yeah, it's important to go in with that, that knowing and that consciousness yes. of this is a choice. I'm sitting with this, you know, the, the journaling with like my non-dominant hand and then my dominant hand and, and this might bring some stuff up. It may yeah. not, but something's going to shift regardless. <laughs> yeah. And it could be really cool and exciting or mm. it could be a little scary at the same time. You yeah. Know? So that is good to have that intention of just like being open-hearted and open-minded to what's coming up. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, is there like, what are the, some of the biggest differences that you've, that you've realized or experienced um, now that you are a mum between being a mum and having a mum so like going having a mum <laughs> having a mum yeah. like you know like so good having question. That, that difference in relationship and being on the flip side of it um, yeah yeah for sure so um I loved my mom so much growing up I was you know like I see parts of my daughter and like as me because like Oh, mom. I remember my mom went away to like a conference and I like cried for a day. Right. Cause I just wanted my mom home. And that's totally how my little girl can be too. But, um, I did grow up with an alcoholic mom as we've talked about a little bit before Jess. Um, and although she had great intentions, like exactly kind of what you just talked about, um, with people kind of being willing to go there, Um, she wanted so badly to do the healing, but she was so smart and so stubborn (laughs) that she, she couldn't do it. And alcohol was her way to numb out. And, you know, it's so there's like an ancestral line, you know, like it didn't, it didn't start with her. It was, um, a lot of the burdens that she carried, I don't believe were really hers. And I've found that out in a lot of the techniques that I've done with like time techniques and things like that. Um, But definitely like as a mom and having her as a mom, like that was a big inspiration for what I didn't want. Like we had a lot of love and we went on vacations and like from the outsider's perspective, you would think we were a pretty normal family but really there was a lot of dysfunction (laughs) and um, there was a lot of chaos. So like my little girl grew up like feeling very unsafe and feeling unheard at times, you know, and like I had to be the parent. So I think that that's definitely one of the biggest struggles I face. And I'm sure many moms can kind of relate to me out there is that when you grow up being the parent, you don't want to like have to parent your whole life. Right. And so (laughs) you kind of face this struggle a little bit as a mom, because you're like, you want like the freedom and the breaks. And that's just been something that I've had to honor with myself is like having space for myself, um, which I don't think my mom also gave herself enough of, um, is crucial to me, not only just being a good person, but being a good parent. Right. Mm. So having that space to like do the work and to like have space to have the thoughts um, and ground my energy because I'm a very empathic person too. So like I take on people's energy very easily and I'm (laughs) sure a lot of light workers out there do. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Same. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So you have to be aware of that. And just, um, I think a lot of moms like put a lot of shame around that, that they want time for themselves and they feel guilty about wanting that and like being like, okay, 
time for you to get away from me for a little bit, <laughs> right? But honestly, like it's super healthy for everyone to, to have that space. Um, mm. So yeah, that's definitely one thing that comes to mind. Yeah, I I love that idea of because to me that's conscious parenting is still like acknowledging that you have needs. I mean, I I remember when people close to me first started having babies, you know, like you hit that age, like, well, I mean, I became an auntie yeah. when I was 16. So like, I feel like that age has been really protracted, right but, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but like, you know, you have people around you who are having babies and you're like, Hey, just take care of you. Like, you know, like, Hey, like, what do you, you know, what do you need? Or it's okay to go out to this wedding or this party or this something. And if you don't want to bring it, like, you know, it's okay to kind of not have your kids there every time and then it's really okay to have them there and have that experience too but it's also yeah. just like still be still let yourself be you still let yourself like you yeah. said ground and tend to your needs because then you actually show up a little more whole in yourself in that moment as well oh you just gave me the chills like 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. you have like an identity to hold you know how many mm. moms do you hear out there that are like I've lost myself. I just feel like everything yeah. I do is for my family. And guess whose choice it is to make it not all about the family? Yeah. It's the mom's choice. Exactly. They just have to, yeah, so, it's just. No matter what, like, even if I give so many props to single moms, because I don't even know how they do it. Like, I couldn't do it without my partner. He, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, before that we started recording this, like, it takes so much balance and communication to hold the vision of the parenting that we wish to pursue. Right. And yeah. cause it's like a whole nother dynamic when you're working with a partner too, because you have different viewpoints and you've had different childhoods and you have different thoughts about things and all of that, right. Comes into play. So now we have to like be a team. Um, but regardless of if you have a partner or not, like reaching out for support is huge. And when we're not reaching out for support, we're really just like confiding in the universe that, um, that we don't truly like believe in our abilities, right. To, and this could go for mothering or business or whatever. Mm. Um, but when we don't enlist support, when we need it, it's like, us not believing in ourselves really because then yeah. we're we're using it as an excuse to why we're not showing up fully right yeah it gives us that reason like to like it's like we're looking for that reason because in case things don't in case things don't work out then at least we have the reason of why yeah. you know yeah definitely the back it, the mm. backbone <laughs> yeah exactly and you're right like something you said in there as well like you've got the different dynamics if you do have a partner involved as well because you also have like like you said the different childhoods and the different inner childs that might be getting yeah. like triggered differently or at the same time or all of these things that are happening so For sure yeah like communicating not just clearly, but also like actively and saying, Hey, yeah. what, like, this is what I need. And what is it that you need? And what can we do to make that work would be. My husband and I just had this conversation this weekend. <laughs> it was like, we could feel, you could like feel the resentment and tension was happening. Yeah, was like, like the spikiness. Oh, okay. <laughs> Serve it up. <laughs> what are we all, yeah. what are we all feeling? <laughs> What's yeah. going on? What do we need? Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's huge. And yeah, it's all kind of goes back to like taking care of yourself and what you really need in order for you to show up. And I know we're talking about like motherhood and everything, but it really, um, kind of a general like theme I'm realizing throughout like my healing journey and creating a business and being a mom and all the things is that when we take care of ourselves and like we mother ourselves for a variety of different reasons like we show up more fully and we execute with like more excellence like everything comes out better when we take care of ourselves and yeah until we fully embody that we're not really going to see any different results in our lives or experiences 
Hmm. It's like an yeah. overflow. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like it's what makes a difference. Um, for those listening or watching who like are trying to understand what that means. So what does mothering yourself mean? How does that, how would so, that show I guess up? I just mean um, different ways to whatever it might be. It's totally different for everybody, but it's like doing things that make you feel good. So I have conversations with clients all the time and one of their, I'd say one of the biggest takeaways, which is really fascinating to me with all of my clients is like the fact that they start to take care of themselves a little more. And this can be like 20 some year olds, 30 some year olds. I just had like a 50 or 60 year old woman who was like, Oh, I'm finally taking care of myself. I'm like, (laughs) finally. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, I don't know if it's like they come knocking on my door knowing they need that. Or if it's I, I energetically the universe or if they feel inspired, I don't know what's happening, but my question always is, is like, what do you want to do to like fill up your cup that Mm -hmm that isn't something you should do. I want, like, I want you to erase the word should from everyone's Mm. vocabulary and tell me what you want. (laughs) And even if you only have, like I had a woman recently, she has 15 minutes. She like feeds her dog and then she waits 15 minutes to take him for a walk. And she was like, I was like, bingo, there's your window for like doing something that fills up your cup. And already she's like, that was one of the biggest takeaways. And I'm like, it can't, can make such a difference. I feel like so many of us feel like whether you're a mom or not, we have to devote hours and hours and hours to like our Mm. spiritual journey or to our exercise routine or to taking baths or whatever. And it's like, give yourself 15 freaking minutes to (laughs) fill up your cup and it's going to go so far. And that's also something I've taught with my little girl. She's four. And we were going for a run one day and she was like, I want to go to the park because we were passing by. I said, we'll, we'll go to the park when we're done with this run. I said, mommy's going to fill up the cup in her heart and then we can fill up the cup in your heart. And it's kind of like, you know, like putting on your mask when you're in the airplane and then putting on your mask, (laughs) right? And she still knows what that means. Like Mm. she still will be like, oh, mom needs to fill up the cup in her heart and then we'll fill up the cup in my heart. And it's just like (sighs) a very non guilty shameful way for like me to get my needs met while still tending to my kids right yeah and it's like there's also the leading by example because I've also heard like the concept that Mm. and I kind of agree with this you know in some way we're always going to screw up our kids at some like no matter how well we're doing (laughs) yeah uh, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's because we're human, you know, like there's always going to be something that we're like, oh, like in reflection, I guess that kind Well, of... it's all about perception, right? Not yeah. to like interrupt you, but like their perception no, yeah. of what you're feeding can be mm-hmm. construed. So, yes, yeah. exactly. But then at the same, or well, end then at the same time is like leading by example. So exactly what you've done is going, oh, this is why I'm doing this. And yeah. it's okay. Like, so you're teaching your daughter, it's okay to prioritize yourself. Yeah. Like you are allowed to, and I know Elizabeth Gilbert, I, she either wrote about it in Big Magic or she spoke mm. about it in her podcast. I need to read Magic that book. Lessons. Yeah, it's really good. You'll love it. Um, <laughs> but she was giving advice to a mother who was trying to write or something like that and like do something creative. And she's like, I just don't have time. I'm a mom and I have all these things. And, and like again, like I, I get it without having kids, like, you know, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, but, you know, so <laughs> there is that element, but at the same time, like the advice given was let them see you show up for you. Let them see that there is something that's important that's for you. Up. Yeah. And at the same time, let them be bored without you entertaining them because that's how their creativity will get sparked as well. That's how Mm. they will have this moment of, well, what can I do? And then like that, you know, that right side of their brain will start to fire and be like, okay, cool. Well, I could just, you know, play with this and then something gets created out of that. Like, so there's just this, this feed on effect that happens when we actually do, 
I say we, when parents actually do prioritize themselves. We're all in it together, sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've parented some kids at some point in your yeah. life. Yeah. Many, many nieces and nephews are yes. in my midst as well. But like, or yeah, like so, when so we, important. when we prioritize like something that's important to us, actually, that's a really good example. I did have um, my nephew, I was watching them and he's a teenager. So like I was watching like young teenager, I was watching them, but I was about to launch this online course and this was a couple of years ago and I just had to get it done. But I'm like, yeah, like I'll watch them. Like they've got homework to do. So he had his laptop. I had my laptop. We were just there at the kitchen bench and he was asking me about what I was working on. So I got to share it with him and explain like, yeah, this is why it's really important to me because of this. And he's like, oh yeah, cool. And then for weeks after he would ask about it he'd be like how's the course going like oh how's it like and it was so beautiful like it was beautiful to have that connection with him as well and he is very very sweet and very very sensitive but uh, in that beautiful way but also it was beautiful because I could like he was able to recognize like oh yeah this is important to her and I'm going to yeah. ask about like it was just this whole exactly he kind of had yeah. that nudge to come back to you and say well how is that passion project coming right? yeah yeah exactly and like he's into like they're a basketball family so like he's super into like his passion now and it's just amazing to um like to be able to reflect that back to him and follow up with in that same way, but with him about basketball, be like, yeah, like how's basketball going? Like tell me about it. And then we just have this natural connection because it's like connection. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's this mutual understanding. Cause I know that he has shown that as well. And I've shown that like, it's just this. So when we show up for ourselves, we do so much more than just tend to ourselves also exactly and it's all about like our programming right like Mm. you've now programmed that like nurturing caring inquisitive part of him whether fully or not like that was definitely Mm. a piece and a part of it right yeah so cool yeah it is it is so cool like and and that's why I love what you do share around um that balance for you as well because it is that reminder of and like you said about your clients as well it is a reminder of hey like take care of you and take a few moments take a deep breath just one (laughs) just just at least one it doesn't take very long like we can all do it (laughs) we can do it yeah yeah Um, it's funny because a lot of people on my instagram see me in the car a lot because that's like my that's my peace place if yeah, I'm not with my, I can my imagine. kids and I'm all alone, like my husband will be like, Do you want to go get the groceries? And I'm like, I do. <laughs> I get five minutes in the car by myself. I'm so pumped, you know? Yeah. Um, but it makes such a difference to just have a little reset. And mm. again, like the communication piece, um, I'm hearing that from a lot of clients too, that that's sometimes a struggle with people. Um, which, I don't real like resonate as much with, but I can certainly help with because I'm like an over communicator. My dad <laughs> always said like communication is a beautiful thing because it really is. Like it keeps us yeah. all on the same page and it keeps everything running smoothly. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're struggling to get that time, I would definitely recommend looking at the communication piece with like with the partner or the other person yeah involved. with any type of yeah. support system yeah yeah definitely yeah. um what about dealing with like the ensuing shame and guilt that mums mm-hmm. or parents as well like I'm sure dads would have that at, that too but that they might feel so prevalent when they yeah even when they do communicate they're like oh I communicated yay and now I feel awful (laughs) (laughs) well valid all feelings are valid so never feel like it's not worthy of a feeling because as soon as we start pushing it down or away that's when Mm -hmm. we're in trouble so my first advice is to like acknowledge it um I have more, but I have like a really simple technique for people when we're feeling a low vibe or negative emotion. Um, It's been 
scientifically studied that it takes 90 seconds to transform an emotion. So once we like recognize the big bad thing, it kind of like just softens a little bit when we're, when we say like, huh, in this moment, I feel really guilty. And then you're like, oh, I feel, I feel guilty. I feel guilt, guilty. Okay. Like I can handle it a little more. <laughs> And then if you can breathe and just like breathe into it for 90 seconds, um, you can just say like, I acknowledge, I accept, and I release you. And that gets us through the moment at least, right? Like, so that we can move on to the next thing. But honestly, time techniques, I know many people probably aren't very familiar with that, but it's a subconscious technique where we literally like visualize you on your timeline of life and we can float back and forth and we can release so much through that like anger sadness anxiety guilt shame like all of the big bad emotions that just keep coming up and when we work at that subconscious level it has a different um what is the word i'm looking for like um organization of time so when we like float back and we cure the first event with whether it was in your life or even before when you're in the womb or even before that, like ancestrally, we can clear the very first event. And then basically everything after that event where you felt that emotion also gets cleaned up. So we like seriously clean up our side of the street when we're working with time techniques yeah. and that's so major so mm. major yeah timeline like therapy and techniques like that is so so helpful because it's not like um it's not like it sweeps it away and it's like oh this never happened and you never felt it <laughs> it's just going like hey this isn't a, this isn't impacting you anymore this is no yeah. longer like a yeah like it's so and the best part about it is you don't have to relive it like mm. it's all about like seeing what happened but like you don't have to like go into the event and feel it all over again because that's like just re-traumatizing us, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's such so, a powerful practice in being the observers of our experience as well, which is like mm -hmm. what I tell clients and students all the time. I'm like, this is just practicing observing yeah. our experience without getting caught up in it and and, and judging it, right? And judging it, yeah. Yeah. And it's really fascinating what comes up when I was taken through time techniques, you know, multiple times, but really recently, um, I got to go like beyond and like, it was like before I was in the womb and I'm like, mm. my like conscious mind was like, but wait, you, you can't picture anything there. Like you didn't <laughs> live it. You didn't see it, but it was really fascinating. What came up for me. I just saw like a picture of my grandma and grandpa together. And that is just like mm. what came to mind. And like, our subconscious is so powerful and so connected to, you know, even when we were in the womb and before that, and like, we are parts of our mother. So like mm -hmm. all the experiences my mom had while she was pregnant with me, like I took those on and going back to like our earlier conversation, I think that that's another huge thing to recognize as a mom is like, is this thing I'm struggling with? Is this mine? Mm. or is it someone else's that like yeah. just needs to be cleared away right yeah because like is that gener conditioning or is it really mine <laughs> yeah that generational trauma or conditioning or stories and programs um I think I read that like it goes back to like six generations that can impact mm -hmm. us now and yeah. it's like well that makes sense and as you said like yeah we existed as like an egg in our mother's womb but while we were like but while our mum was in her like her mother's womb we existed as that egg as well like you know there was just like there's that connection through to our grandmothers and then it's just all of these stories these not wild like the way evolution works like you know a few generations ago was the great depression so of course like there can be stories around like not what, having enough yeah not having enough <laughs> and what safety and security means yeah. like you know and that can so easily be um transmitted <laughs> it's not the yeah, word I wanted to use but it can be now. like yeah. yeah it can show up now and it's just in our thoughts and our beliefs and our 
yeah and it's so subconscious as well yeah it's just I feel like sometimes I mean if you're doing the work you probably are giving your subconscious enough credit but like in in general senses we forget to until we're shown that like oh yeah this is like or reminded oh yeah this could be a subconscious thing that's at play and this could be our subconscious mind is literally um in charge of 99.94 percent of all of our thoughts and beliefs and therefore actions and results in our lives it's pretty wild to think about that and that's um another thing like i firmly believe in like affirmations and incantations and journaling and all that but i also believe that it can like only take you so far because Mm -hmm. our subconscious is really where we need to do the work right yeah yeah definitely it's like when we're trying to think our way out of how we feel or challenges or problems or things like that it's like yeah your mind has a purpose it's very very useful but like sometimes you can't like think your way out of feeling something you have to kind of just and you might you might not ever understand where a particular feeling is coming from when it comes up like it may not ever make sense in any given experience but it's just showing yeah how much our subconscious has a has a role in in our everyday experience so yeah that's Mm. so true oh this (laughs) this is so good because it's so like I feel like it's so helpful for like as a reminder for everyone to be like whether you're a mom or a dad or not a parent at all like you know like as we started this it's like we were all kids once like I'm yeah. pretty sure like we were we all, all have subconscious on. minds and we all yeah. have conscious minds and we all have yeah. a critical faculty like yeah yeah exactly and it's and it's just this important reminder to I feel like it's almost like be a little gentler on on yourself when you do yeah. feel the shit and when you do have those triggers like as a parent as you said when For you're sure. like oh I can see like my inner child like I can feel my inner child is like hey it, like hey yeah. oh, like this thing when your daughter does something you know or yeah. you like it's just this this gentleness instead of the story that you hear a lot especially with mums which is oh I should I should like the word again should yeah I shouldn't feel this way or I should I be shouldn't doing react better. that way or I shouldn't have those <sighs> thoughts and or I'm doing such a bad job because I'm yeah. human and having feelings and thoughts and <laughs> And, and to touch on that, just for moms that are watching and are like, okay, I related with so much of this, like, but what do I do when I yeah. react poorly or I do make my kid feel bad and then I feel guilty about it. I know how to make myself feel unguilty, but what do I do for my kids? Yeah. And that is to repair and just show them humility because that is going to bring like so much it's gonna like so I don't know if parents out there have heard of like our reptilian brain versus like Mm -hmm. our I forget what they call like the whole brain basically and like you when we like react and we snap and like or maybe our kids are like really like acting up and like just crying you know because of like they didn't get the apple or whatever, you know, like kids like cry for like the craziest reasons. And you're just like, (laughs) seriously. But instead of if you have reacted poorly to that, um, or if you're looking for a new way to react to that, like connecting with them and, Mm -hmm. and getting into their prefrontal cortex versus like their reptilian brain is huge. Like a connection to just like how they're feeling and validate that feeling. And then from there, then you can like, do the repairing but instead of like just trying to justify and reason with them right off the get-go when they're like pouring tears that's not helping anybody because they're (laughs) frustrated they're frustrated and everybody's like in this phase where we're like ah um but if there are moments you know that maybe we act out of alignment because like I'm human I certainly do and you know when my cup is not full and I haven't done the best job of taking care of myself I'm certainly more apt to have poor reactions or old habits might come to the forefront but um having that humility and being able to repair and apologize will just like 
it will like help your children so much more. Um, it'll have a more positive effect than the detrimental effects that happened, I guess is what I'm trying mm. to say. Like yeah. The repair goes further than what the damage yeah was. you can yeah if that definitely makes sense. <laughs> I think it does because it's okay. not like and and in that repairing it's not stepping in and then asking the child to parent you as well like it's not going oh like you know like begging for forgiveness or like pretending to be sad be yeah. until they forgive or you having like them like accept your feelings or like yeah your feelings. Putting yeah that pressure on them is is not it's what too we much do either yeah, but you could like the conversation, the theoretical, like hypothetical conversation that ran through my brain as you were sharing that was like, yeah, you I was mumbling be, like, through that. <laughs> no, it was great. It was <laughs> okay. Because I had just had this vision of like, yeah, it's like going and leading by example again of going, oh, like mommy was just feeling this, mommy's feeling a bit yeah. overwhelmed. How are you feeling? Like, you know, like it's, you know, that it's okay to to have feelings and just yeah. that conversation is going yeah I have feelings but I'm owning them like mommy's got it, you know like mommy's gonna take care of that how are you feeling because you know like you're the child like let's yeah. let's sort of ingrain this idea that having feelings is okay mm -hmm. it's okay when we get upset and then we come back to it because we can yeah. come back to it and if we were just but, all hunky dory and like perfect all the time, I mean, that's just not reality. That's just no. never. I mean, even Gandhi said he felt anger. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, it's just having that, yeah, straight up humility. And I think you can have it with any relationship you have, really. I think mm. it's really powerful, you know, with your partners yeah. or coworkers or whatever. Um, to be able to repair and you had said something that sparked something and now it, now it left <laughs> <laughs> it will come okay. back to me yeah and it is that human like it's I really feel like yeah that's showing ex the example of oh it is okay to like you said to feel anger like yeah the human it's like how how many of us were taught that like when we're angry like to just not yeah. feel it <laughs> that's been one of my biggest motherhood healing journeys is yeah dealing with the anger yeah. and like not resenting it and mm -hmm. accepting it for what it is and like seeing what else it means because anger specifically is a secondary emotion so we're typically yeah. feeling something else before we feel the anger and a lot of times for me that's been like disappointment in something like mm. my kid's not napping or He's up in the middle of the night. That's biggest. My biggest trigger is like my kids not sleeping when they're supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> um, Mommy needs so the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My freedom. It's one of my mm. core values. So, um, yeah, just having that like honest look, like we've said before, and and looking at it without judgment, like you would like at your kid mm. or any kid, right? You wouldn't yeah. judge them for having the feelings that they're feeling so don't judge yourself yeah definitely yeah oh so many so many so many good lessons in this I, one. I just remembered what I was gonna <laughs> yes, say go. it's just a funny tidbit um, okay <laughs> in, in the humility lesson my husband told my daughter one time like I'm sorry daddy lost his patience and she said well you better go find them <laughs> Oh, so I thought that was adorable <laughs> and just kind of an insight to like how their brains really do function they're just yeah they just they're just see it and yeah oh funded. that is the best um <laughs> can you let people know where they can find you and follow you and your work yes of course. Um, so I have a website. It's called wildhappyworth.com. You can, you know, see all sorts of different things on there. I have a freebie. I'm actually coming out with a new freebie called Heal Your Shit. It's going to be a Heal Your Shit kit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, Wild Happy Worth. Um, Taylor Bonga, again, is my name. So yeah, you can pretty much find me anywhere. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so, so much for your time and for sharing some of your story and experiences because it was 
so much fun to actually talk about it, but also there's so many lessons in there and reminders and things like useful things that we can all take away from that. So I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing that. Oh, well, right back at you. Thank you so much for holding this space and chatting with me and taking the time out of your day as well. My pleasure.